and welcome back to the Xfinity Desk Elamite and T2. Just finished up Ronin versus Team Liquid, and we're about to get into the match of the week. The rematch of DreamHack Atlanta Finals. Splice the champions going up against Optic Gaming, arguably one of the, the best team in the world. It's going to take more than just one event for Splice to overtake that crown, but it is what they are looking to do. Now, before we jump into that match too much further, let's go into the clip of the week here. Got a little segment from Lethal. All right, and there you can see it here. He is actually playing against uh, a hybrid form, but it is essentially uh, envious that they are playing against right now. And you'll see Lethal here with that rail gun just pick up a monstrous amount of kills here. Just getting Envy on spawn trap. That's a triple. Make that an overkill. That's Ola coming off spawn. Again, he's already been killed once in this series. And then a kill tag there on to Hook. So pretty impressive. Kill tag's never been easy. It's always fun to get. That has to be so frustrating if you're Ola. Being in the same clip twice, no one ever wants to be in the same clip twice. No, I remember when we were playing, uh, I, I think I was pretty much the king of that. Like, hey, they got a triple kill. Everyone hide. Do not never, give them the montage. I'll never forget but... Nated, Guardian Ball, straight up in Carbon Land, at Legit's place. We were all trying to hide from Nated, and he still somehow got a kill tag. Oh, I do, I do remember <laughs> that. That was. Super I can't funny. remember who was in the clip twice. Hopefully, it wasn't me. Yeah, it definitely wasn't me. That never, never happened. But either way, like we said, match of the week. Optic Gaming going up against Splice here. Let's go ahead and take a little bit of a further look at Optic Gaming. Now, they finished second at DreamHack Atlanta here but they are coming out strong and they are looking to get their revenge here on to uh, Splice here. Took them down four to two in the bracket. Yeah, and you mentioned that Splice is looking to string numerous wins against Optic. So beating them once, that's great. I'm sure it feels good, especially for these guys to get their first tournament win. But for Optic, they're looking to bounce back really strong. It's gonna be very difficult for Splice to string it together especially when these guys probably have done a little bit of research on where they fell short in Atlanta and where they need to make their improvements on, especially in this specific series. But we may find out, maybe it's just Splice really matches up well against the play styles of Optic Gaming. Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, Splice's closest series of that event was actually against Team Liquid when Three, it went to Game 5, right? Yeah. Exactly. 3-2 win for Splice there. And of course, they did not match up against each other again. That was Liquid falling to Envy 3-2 to two, once again in the loser's bracket. Now, speaking of Optic Gaming and somebody that had a really good performance yesterday on top of that, Royal 2, arguably one of the best players, if not the best player in the game. 2.14 KAD so far uh, based on his games yesterday. He was putting up some serious numbers. Our only Canadian player in the league as well here. So interesting. He's been around for quite some time, been teaming with Snakebite for a very, very long time and we'll see how they're able to match up now as this is gonna be the match we're all most excited for. We've been waiting to see how this one is going to work out. And there are the game types. We're starting this one off with Fathom CTF, Eden Slayer, Rig Strongholds, Coliseum CTF, and then Truth Slayer. If we see anything like we saw in Atlanta for Coliseum CTF, we are in for one heck of a game. Really looking forward to seeing Slayer Eden too. Some really great snipers on this, uh, out of these players here. Rig Strongholds 2 is going to be very, very in-depth in terms of the rotations again. So this is going to be very fun and explosive, very fast-paced once we get past Fathom CTF. These games are going to be extremely explosive. Fathom and Ethan going to be pretty slow. You saw Optic Gaming yesterday. What was it? They didn't even get to 50, obviously, against Luminosity, did they, Kyle? It was only, I think, 40 kills, maybe even less than that. So that's just ridiculous coming in. Um, from Optic Gaming, just really slow, methodical play, really showing Luminosity a lot of respect. I'm not expecting that again today. It's very rare that you're going to see that. It was more or less how the game was unfolding and just very passive, aggressive plays coming in overall. But we did see once Optic got control in Eden and once they started to get some more snipes, they were just running around doing whatever they wanted. You saw Lethal just jumping up and down in the catwalk area. I believe it was Royal 2 as well after, after Lethal went on a killing spree to go on a little bit of spree of himself. 
And then also a little bit of misplays happening from Luminosity right around that overshield side. You saw Trippy get picked off by Lethal, which is that huge snipe, probably the biggest play of that game for Optic Gaming to get that win against uh, LG. So you're going to have to play a little bit differently if you're Splice, maybe learn some of the things that LG made on from mis uh, mistakes from previously. And also coming in hot, that is the key, making sure that you are fired up and intense to get this one underway. It's going to be Fathom, CTF, the man with the plan, always going for the railgun. It's going to be Frosty over here. Instead of going bottom center, going to make his way out over towards the pit, and he gets taken out immediately from a grenade. So great job from Splice shutting that down. Now they're going to try to advance on the map. Boo Boo Doo Boo, he's just crouching, waiting for some information to come in. Doesn't see anybody quite yet. Trying to watch the jump up for anyone that's going over to top center. Here's that Royal 2's on over towards the porch. Has another player to his left, but he misses Royal 2. His Royal 2 sprinted on over towards the silent. Yeah, and look at that. Two dead here for Optic. 4v2 situation with the flag being pulled. Royal 2 clutch kill on to Renegade. Boo Boo Doo Boo, nice flag run. Find a lot of time. Can he get any damage down? No, that's going to be a great grenade coming out from Frosty. Looks like Optic Gaming answering right back. Take down two for Splice here, and that's going to be lethal. It actually picks up that return. I like where Boo Boo head was at. Had a couple different opportunities to run that flag in a different um, route. Maybe bottom center could have stayed alive just a little bit longer. Maybe not challenged when he was behind the box, but still, nonetheless, having the right idea. And also, Renegade has some perfect shots to try to keep that one alive. But really like that Optic sacrificed their lives, sending two people onto that flag return one after another. Eventually, ended up going on over to Lethal. And now they're running a flag of their own. You can see everybody is pushed out over towards that side of the map, having to overextend from Splice. It's going to be very difficult to try to get this return. They need kills. It starts with Shotzi getting one onto Lethal. Royal 2 drops Boo Boo Doo Boo. Now it's a two on three situation in favor of Splice, but that flag is extremely far. Someone just needs to go and get that touch if they're Optic, but they also need to get the Slays at the same time. There's the touch from Lethal. Royal 2 is going to drop as well. Last guy alive is Frosty trying to get the touch, and he does. So a little bit of a relay there coming in from Optic and it works out for them, but a possible counter cap coming in, and this time they elect to run it bottom center. Should work out for them, a counter cap coming in for Splice, back and forth, back and forth. Now we reset here as the Railgun and the Camouflage are gonna come back up. Oh, great shots from Frost. He picks up that 1v1 win over shots. He gets reward rewarded with a Railgun on top of that. Seeing the kill feed though, Shooter gets himself a perfect kill. Renegade picks up a trade, and they're gonna be holding off some of the aggression here. Frosty needs to make sure he backs down a little bit. You do not want to get caught out. You can see all four of those player outlines on your screen. The aggression starting to come in, but what a fantastic railgun. An even better grenade from Shooter to finish off that kill. Yeah, and Boo Boo Doo Boo, he has a cap on the board, but he just picked up his first kill about nine minutes and 35 seconds into this game. It's been a very, very fast paced game here. You can tell these guys are ruthless with the objective, taking advantage of every opportunity that's in front of them. Frosty grabs the railgun kill, and all, now you're gonna have Shooter trying to stay alive over here towards the treehouse, just making sure that nobody from Optic Gaming is getting any advantages by pushing this side of the map. That's what Royal 2's trying to do, but he has another player located behind him. I'm not sure if that player ended up dropping, but I believe he should be getting flanked any time. Instead of getting flanked, that player actually made his way towards the flag, and that's the flag away marker that you're seeing right at the top of your screen. So now Shooter, aware of that, gonna have to find out where this one's going. Shotzi taking Snake Bite down to no shields. They're gonna relay that one right on over to Frosty. Frosty dies, but tosses out over towards the pit. They're just trying to distract for Lethal and for Royal 2, who both pick up kills throughout all of that time. You do have the Railgun. Actually, it's going to be the Light Rifle in the hands of Royal 2. He used all the ammo in that one, and I'm not sure if that was the plays Optic Gaming was looking for. They now give up control right back on over to Splice and weren't able to capitalize with that Railgun. Yeah, they didn't get anything going off of that one. So good defense coming out of Splice. Once again, this game is not disappointing. You just see the level of skill and back and forth between these two teams electing to win to fight, win to just ignore a player and run the flag. And we're seeing so many flag pulls here, changes of directions. What a flag run to bring that up top center. Gets a kill on the Royal 2, keeps the flag on the map. Shotzi, come on now. Has to realize there's a player to his left that's going to be Snakebite crouching around the corner. Can he land a big shot on it? Snakebite getting the trade. That was huge. Shooter needs to hop on this return ASAP. Lethal's watching it, though. There goes the flag return. There it goes. Second flag capture going on over to Splice. Shooter picking up a double kill as well. 
Shooter, most kills in the game, sitting at 14, Kyle. That guy's going off right now. Looking at the rest of the kills, Boobie Boobie only sitting at two, but has two flag captures. Snakebite, the man that you saw sitting at the bottom for Optic with only five. So Optic, they're getting out Slade right now. They need to start getting positioning. Very rarely do you say that Optic Gaming is getting out Slade. And they are also getting out objective as well. Constant runs going in towards bottom center and over towards the pit. Ops Gaming not really expecting that. Maybe they need to start watching that area a little bit more. Yeah, we saw Optic Gaming. They were the ones that put the first flag cap on the board, and Splice is the ones to answer back with two in a row. One of those being just essentially a counter capture here, uh, putting all four members of Optic Gaming down while they cap that first flag here. Now, we still quite a ways away from seeing this next game will come up. Finally, Railgun looks like it's going to switch hands over to Renegade. Renegade. Yeah, Renegade ended up killing Royal 2, who's had the Railgun a lot. I've seen a lot of Railguns going in the hands of Optic Gaming, but they're just not getting the right kills at the right time and not pushing in the base to get the flag runs while they have map control. It's been really good defensive stance coming out from Splice, picking off that one player that wants to advance or possibly the guy that's trying to get in there and run the flag. And now they have a good advantage over here, two to one, trying to close this one out with their third flag capture. Like you said, Optic Gaming, they put the first one on the board. It was an immediate counter capture about 15 seconds after that coming in from Splice. And now they've just continued to outslay Optic Gaming over and over again. A lot of that on Shooter and Renegade's back combined. They have 29, make that 30 kills, Kyle. Shotzi and Boo Doo have 11 combined. Wow, they are really stepping it up to this game and just, you know, can't even stress how badly they're out slaying Optic Gaming right now, even though there's a lot of aggression still coming out and some amazing shots from Snakebite. This is a scary moment here now for Splice, though, with just a little over five and a half minutes left to play. Flags being moved, the numbers advantage over here with two rail guns in Optic Gaming's favor. That's three dead. This flag is absolutely going in. Just love watching these two teams play. They are playing at a very high level and they are very evenly matched. Two to two, we're all tied up. Frosty with camo railgun here. What can he do? Kyle, what do you think the biggest difference has been in the last minute and a half, two minutes here for Optic? For Optic here, I think it comes down to the power up and power weapon control here. We're seeing Frosty get that camo once again and those railgun kills just went on a killing spree with that weapon here. And that is absolutely what helped them put that flag capture in. When it comes down to two teams like Optic and Splice, it is those little advantages that are gonna tell the story. They're also doing a great job of winning a lot of their 1v1s and 50-50s, but they weren't able to win that one, and now Shooter ends up pulling a flag, but he gets taken out instantly. So now you're gonna see another flag pull coming in from Optic Gaming this time. Somehow that grenade, I believe, went through the wall and connected onto Frosty. So Shotzi getting uh, the grenade kill, and then eventually that's go or the grenade landed, and then that kill goes on over towards his teammate. So that flag run gets halted overall from Optic Gaming, and now Shotzi gonna try to advance on the map. Nice shots on the Royal 2, doesn't go for the beatdown, stays alive, but ooh, switches over to his pistol, started to run out of ammo, and then flies out, no shields, reloading the gun. Somehow, still alive, even though a little bit of mechanical air coming in from him. Very rare for Shotzi, you see him make any mistakes like that, but he's still alive, making his way on over towards that base. Spots out Royal 2 in front of him, switches on over to the pistol, right back on over to the light rifle, finds the kill. Is he gonna be able to get that flag run out, though? You can see Boo Boo Doo working, trying to take out Lethal, they need to get get this one tossed out because you can see the flag is being returned. They run it bottom middle again. This is the third flag run we've seen down towards there. They get halted though. Renegade trying to stay alive. No, Lethal's gonna beat him down. That's gonna be Optic Gaming with the return. Resetting the map now in their favor. Yeah, and Royal 2 is going to pick up this new railgun here. So this is going to be another trying moment for Splice if they can hold off this aggression. We saw most of these flag captures from Optic came in when uh, uh, Frosty had the railgun. What a crucial miss, but however, some great grenades. Snakebite secures himself a double kill. Another member of Splice gets up top center, grabs that camo, but it's not going to be long for this world. Frosty takes him out. The aggression is still coming, and the Splice need to pick up a few more kills. Yeah, Lethal needs to stay alive over towards the elbow, but Shooter's gonna shut that down. Snakebite ends up getting a kill. You can see nice little pre-grenade coming in onto Renegade. Can he pick up the triple kill? Puts his railgun away, had plenty of shots. That was an overkill for Royal 2 if he wanted it. A little bit of hesitation coming back to bite him. Frosty though comes off the spawn, picks up a double. Lethal finds a perfect right onto Renegade. Boo Boo Doo the last guy alive, and he gets shot down. Optic Gaming, they come back from being down two to one.
and win game number one, three, two. Yeah, they take the lead one zero. We get a counter capture from Splice. Splice comes out, takes the lead two to one, and then it ultimately was the last two rail guns that really secured off to gaining that victory. Burl two being able to act as an anchor, sitting up top center, going on that killing spree while they move that last flag, and that was really scary because, like you pointed out, Tom. That was almost an overkill kill tacular. Everybody from Splice was coming off spawn over towards the silo, but for, unfortunately for them, Royal 2 was just raining down shots from above. Remember when we were saying that Splice was out slaying Optic? Well, that ended up not happening. You could just see right there, Optic Gaming going huge towards the end. 19 and 11 for Royal 2. They had a decent amount of power weapon kills to 12 railgun kills, so the only one railgun kill coming in from Splice. That ended up being the huge different difference maker. They weren't able to get captures a majority of that game count when they had the railgun. Splice ended up staying ahead somehow without any power weapon kills. But then as soon as they started applying that railgun and getting the objective done at the same time, that's when they were able to capitalize on it. It's almost like having a rocket launcher. It's maybe even better than having a rocket launcher at times, especially with how far you can shoot the railgun. When you get that weapon, you need to make sure that you're getting in position and that you're also making sure that your teammates know that it's their job to go in there and run their flag because this is the position that you want to be in if you're Royal 2. You want to be top center, watching spawns, not having to worry about advancing into the map and being that guy that has to, has to get aggressive and run that flag. You want to be the guy that's calculating the spawns and laying down the easy shots. Yeah, and of course, game two, we're looking at, you can see on the bottom of your screen there, that's going to be an Eden Slayer. Uh, now, game one, at one point during that game, you can see in that replay, there were two railguns in favor of Optic Gaming, and that was one of their fly captures. I think the one to tie up the series, or tie up this game, I mean, uh, two to two was when they, in fact, had those two and picked up three railgun kills while running that flag. So that absolutely tells the story of the power weapons and having uh, the importance of keeping them out of Optic Gaming's hands. Splice themselves, they don't even necessarily need it. You can tell that because they were up 2-1 with only one railgun kill. So they don't need the power weapons to get these They captures. could have had zero railgun kills at that point. We don't know if Shotzi got yeah, his railgun yeah, kill eventually really good point. later on. And that's not acceptable if you're Splice. You need to be on top of that stuff. And it's not like they weren't in control they had control of the maps numerous times it's just they weren't in the right place at the right time they were really valuing the camo you got to give it to splice on on top of those camo times they were there burning the camos over and over again getting some for themselves but you got to find the railgun you got to make sure that you're killing the guy with the railgun using that ammo as well and in terms of actual power weapon grabs i don't think that it says that but i'm curious to see how many actual grabs that they had compared to how many kills that they had because i want to know if it's they weren't just capitalizing with that weapon which it doesn't seem like they really had it, or uh, if they just couldn't find the gun. Yeah, I mean, as far as flag grabs, they each had five returns. Optic Gaming with uh, eight flag pulls compared to the six, I think it was, for Splice there. So just a little it's bit. a lot of flag pulls. Yeah, a lot of flag pulls in that game. Lots of returns in that game. But like we said, we are heading into a game number two, Slayer uh, on Eden. And we'll see how this one goes. All right, guys, now is the time to tweet the stream. You know the link. You're currently watching it. Let's get as many eyes as possible in here for the match of the week. It's the rematch from DreamHack Atlanta Finals. It is Splice taking on Optic Gaming. Optic Gaming with that great number one. Uh, great game number one if you just missed it. Three to two flag comeback on Fathom CTF. And now it is going to be Eden Slayer one to one with the Rockets. Or the Hydra shooting them over like rockets going on over towards the red security side. I love this play to go and get the green gun. It's one of the most important things that you can do in just being like, okay, guys, if they're going to go and get this overshield, if they're going to go and get this sniper rifle, we have to control security. We have to make sure that we don't give them full control because if you allow a team to set over up towards blue side and you allow them to get into security, it makes things so much more difficult from that red side of the map. You don't have any height advantage. You don't really have much cover, and you have to advance on the map. I mean, and just starting off this game, Royal 2 got a kill on Boopa Dubu with the Hydra Launcher, put damage onto Renegade, it was cleaned up by another player, and then picked up oh. a, a Hydra melee to secure himself another kill off the start of this one. Very nice. Screen gun plays coming in from Lethal. Now Optic Gaming has control. We saw what they did with this yesterday. They were completely fine holding red side. They were okay with it, and then they made the plays when the overshield was coming up. So 30 seconds or so until that next one pops up. You could see Splice, they're getting aggressive on this. Not really sure if they have to, Kyle. I mean, 
It was what, seven to five before they ended up making that push, maybe six to five, and now it is 11 to five. They could have just postured, sat back, wait for that next overshield, and then made the play around that one. Maybe try to flank over towards the red alley area because you know Snakebite's gonna rotate the sniper rifle towards red outside, and there's gonna be numerous people towards that red fan. That would be a huge, huge flank right now if someone was able to pull it off, but too little, too late, and their aggression came in way too early. Yeah, Splice is now trying to push in again here as we see Booba Dooba gets dropped. Shotzi's by himself, gets taken out. Renegade's over on low bridge. He's got multiple players in front of him with no shields. That's three dead once again off that push from Splice. And Snakebite with the sniper rifle is going to be able to get the overshield. And you notice that Frosty, he left that overshield. He called out for Snakebite to go and pick that one up. Instead, he wanted to advance on over towards the blue Sneaky and make sure that he was 100% securing that one for his teammate. Very selfless play coming out from Frosty in this Optic Gaming squad. You don't really need to have Sniper Rifle Overshield. It's kind of, you know, working against itself there because you want to be aggressive with the Overshield. Um, but at the same time, you want to be fairly passive with the Sniper Rifle, especially in Eden trying to take those angles. So um, as rifle. great as a uh, play that was for Frosty, as selfless as a play that was, it's not really ideal for Optic Gaming to be in this position. You would much rather have someone going in there and charging Sniper into the security or going in there and being a distraction, trying to trade kills or get some sort of advantage. Instead, they're just going to continue Continue to hold this red side plasma grenade onto the sniper rifle to blow that one back. And now we'll see if Splice can break this setup. Yeah, but it looks like Renegade's going to be the one to find that sniper rifle. So finally, seeing some more power weapons go over to uh, Splice here. Snakebite with amazing shots. Picks up a killing spree and a trade to end his life there. 16 to 9, so still very reasonable game here for Splice. Ooh. But wow, Royal 2. Talked about him before the game got started, and he is answering the call here now. Perfect shot on wow, the boot. Snakebite Doobie. with a perfect as well. And we have two monitors here, and I was watching those shots that Snakebite just had on shots, and they were just ridiculous. Very tough angle that he pulled off. And Lethal gets a good grenade on the shooter, but two kills going on over to the favor of Splice. Can they find any more? No, it's just a two for two trade. You're going to have Snakebite with the sniper rifle, Royal 2 with the sniper rifle as well, and Saj Shotzi trying to make his way into security to pick up these weapons. Yeah, we'll see what where there's going to be able to go. Renegade's got the sniper. Unfortunately, he gets taken out. We'll try to move over with who grabs the grabs that one next. Hydra's coming in. Shotzi barely able to escape. Overshield. And we talked about Optic having two railguns last game. They've got two sniper rifles here now. We're over on board with Lethal, who's got one of those. They're trying to set up and secure this overshield. It's, what is that? Royal Dude ended up burning the overshield throughout all of that. So great job from Optic. They only not only burn the overshield there, but they maintain sniper rifle control. That's not ideal for them to drop. Ooh, nasty snapshot there from Lethal. That wasn't ideal for them to drop, but that headshot helps make up for it and a little bit of a trade of kills there. Boo Boo Doo flying in. That's a three for one trade overall in favor of Splice. So Optic kind of has to fall back here. Nice no scope again from TJ onto the player from the bridge. Doesn't realize that there's three players eventually pushing him outside towards the red fan. Has to look for Shooter over there. Nice little body shot on him. Royal 2 picks up a double kill. That Shooter is still alive down there. You got to take him out. He's just dipsy doodling around. His strong side would say just distracting over towards the optic red side. They still haven't taken him out yet, so that's going to allow Spice to go and advance here. Shooter picking up another kill, looking for some more blood, and there it is. Are they going to advance from Spice? That was enough time for these guys to push up. Only one shot left in this sniper rifle, and Lethal is using it to perfection. Great job from him, getting that trade onto Boo Boo Doo Boo. And now the cavalry has arrived from Splice. They are now going to retake red base. We haven't seen any blue setups, Kyle. It's been a really weird game. It's just constantly bringing the sniper over towards red, constantly bringing the sniper rifle over towards security. You would think that, you know, we'd see some sort of meta here, but it's just been counter meta. Yeah, just a lot of aggression. And, you know, ironically sniper enough, something you don't see very often is when the last two players alive on a team both have sniper rifles and are able to hold off the aggression from all four of the enemy team. So let's see, that is going to be Boo Boo Doo had the sniper rifle gets taken out. The new one is, in fact, up. I'm trying to keep an eye on how much ammo he left here. But one thing we're seeing, we haven't seen a lot in Eden Slayer so far, is the amount of use with this Hydra. Hydra is very key, especially 
when you don't have much to take back from the red side. Big battle going on over towards the overshield. You can see that one popped up right around that 41 marker. There's going to be three dead on the side of Optic. Snake bite the last guy alive. They pick up the overshield and they pick up the sniper rifle. You notice, even though Renegade, he's known as one of the top snipers on this team, he's going to give it on over to Shotzi, who's no slouch himself. But overshield in the hands of Splice, six kills to make up. Totally possible. Here. And you know what? The one thing we pointed out is Optic gave the sniper to the overshield player uh, in in Snake Bite. Uh, what we saw from Splice is Renegade got that overshield and then t gave the sniper rifle over exactly. to Shotzi so he can continue playing aggressive. Exactly. And that's what he's doing. Renegade's already out of his overshield. He advanced on the map. He didn't die. He's in a really great position over towards Catwalk. As I say, he doesn't die. He ends up dropping the perfect shots from Lethal. Five kills to make up here. That's a good start. Getting that killing spree for Shotzi. He's going to have to go on a little bit of a frenzy here, though, in order to bring this one back. Optic Gaming, they are just going to slow play this one. We could see it really come down to this next overshield coming up in about one minute from now. So don't expect Optic Gaming to give up any dumb deaths. You can see them just all running away, making their way over towards Red Base, maybe trying to put two people over towards the security. Instead, it's just going to be Royal 2 crouching over there. And is he going to bail on that side of the map? You would think they want to keep that under control, but it seems like they are really just posturing over towards the Red Fan. Yeah, they've got three over here towards Red Fan. We'll see if Shotzi's able what? to connect on these. Sure enough, just no scopes. Frosty right off the bat, only down by three kills. What was it, up to 12 kill lead, I think? At least 10 so far this game. And with that new overshield oh. coming up soon, Shotzi, I think that might have been his first miss that we even saw from him so far here. 32 to 34. It was the easiest shot out of all of them. <laughs> yeah, well. right? And then, of course, all of a sudden, I did not expect, I thought this game was almost I over think it here. Was, uh, I could be wrong, but I want to say the overshield was around 41. So that's coming up very soon here. Tons of battles going to be happening over towards outside, in my opinion. But it looks like it's going to be a mid bridge push coming in. Lethal flies in there. Boo Boo gets a kill as well. Needs to land the snow scope. This is huge. There's the overshield. It was right at 41. 34 instead. Shots are going to pick that one up. He gets melted. Absolutely melted. It was like he didn't even have the overshield. Not sure if he got comboed or what. You could see Snake, but he did have the combo on his death screen when he died right there. So that's what had to be, you know, the the gun that took his overshield down. I can't assume that all the players just shot Shotzi at the same time. Very clutch play from Optic Gaming, shutting down the huge hope for Splice to get back into this game. Oh, but what's gonna happen here? There's gonna be a big battle over towards security. There's two members from Optic in there. Shotzi's getting collapsed on. He needs some help. Great Grenade comes out, takes one player, no shields. Lethal is a, well, picks up a trade there with Shotzi. So still, four kill game. Sniper over in the hands of Snake Bite. There he is, that's the Sniper Rifle player weak. You can, I think he's shooting those sniper shots. You can hear him trying to waste that ammo here. He does not want to let Shotzi get teamwork. back into this game. Such great teamwork coming in from Optic Gaming, just doing that bait and switch over towards the blue sneaky side. But you're going to see two kills going on over to Splice. They're going to start collapsing. Big no scope there from Snake Bite onto Shotzi. He's looking for some more blood. Big flank for Boo Boo as well. A little bit of sloppy shots here. He needs to win this battle, but Lethal gives him the business. Shooter coming in with the trade. That's two for one there. Not the end of the world for Splice. Still a couple of kills before this one's all over. Not sure if they're gonna wait for this next overshield or not. I believe we said it was 41 last time. I believe he picked this one up right around 34 this time around. So get ready for that. That is gonna be the big explosive battle that decides this game. Yeah, up until that point, you're essentially gonna have Opti Gaming trying to stay out of the sights of Renegade Two here. Renegade, he's gonna have to start taking some new positions. So still a lot of time. Oh, overkill time, season. overkill time. Oh, I'm so nervous, Tom. I don't even know what to say here now. Well, let's see what happens. Let's see where Renegade elects to go. Is he going to get aggressive? I think he showed up on radar there. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I feel like if yep, he, yep, that player he did. Dewey oh, was no. Well, he needs a no scope here very badly. Or he just needs to take some weird route. There's the no scope, and it doesn't land. Frosty shutting it down. Is Frosty going to land the no scope this time? No, instead he's just going to switch on over and work with Snake Bite to get Boo Boo Doobie the business. Shotzi picks up the overshield though. So now you're going to see Shotzi getting aggressive. Where is he going to make his play? He fell down. So now Optic Gaming is going to be able to predict where he is. Most likely going to make his way over towards the old camo instead and then probably go over towards the catwalk. That seems to be the play right now. If you're Shotzi, let's we'll see where he likes to go. You do have one player on the player outlines up towards catwalk already. That's going to be Renegade. He's crouching. 
Shoots Snakebite a couple times and backs off. Probably calls it out to Shotzi. Everyone else from Optic starting to focus on that side of the map. No grenades for Snakebite here. So he's going to tell Frosty most likely to back off and just play the bait and switch game over towards Red Security. 50 seconds left on the clock, Kyle. Still anyone's game. Yeah, and Frosty, I think, only has one shot left in that sniper if he hasn't already used it. Snakebite, what a fantastic job just running away. But Shotzi, look at the kill feed. He grabs himself a Hydro Launcher kill. This is reminding me of Envy versus Optic Game 5 in, like, summer 2016 Pro League season in here 48 to 46 will we see it going to overtime who's gonna die here so wow no room for error anymore for splice it looks like renegade's gonna be in a battle with multiple people wow, royal 2 royal wins, two wins the 1v1 not sure if he got some help right there but two phenomenal games these guys aren't disappointing three to two all the way down to the wire 50 47 game number two so unfortunate for splice they could have won either one of those games and now they're sitting at 0-2 in this series very, very tough to swallow there if you're Splice. Taking a look at the stats, not Boo-Boo-Doo's best performance. He came out very slow in Fathom CTF, not picking up his first kill until about two and a half minutes into that game. And then here, seven and 17. Definitely looking for him to pick it up there, but give credit where it's due. Very nice baiting and switch going on over towards that red side for Optic Gaming. Snakebite staying alive as long as he possibly can. Small plays like Shooting the green gun towards the overshield guy ends up paying huge dividends overall. Shotzi with the sniper rifle and the killing spree just wasn't enough. And again, Splice, you have to go into this game number three thinking, we could have won either of these. Let's try to refresh the series here. Let's try to do what you know really hasn't been done to Optic Gaming and give them the reverse sweep. You can't hold your head down too low here. You fought very, very hard in these first two games, but Optic Gaming just too much at the end, clutching it out. And that's what really set them apart again for a majority of Halo 5 is winning the close games. Yeah, I mean, look at the scores. They don't get much closer than that. 3-2, 50-47, and a game number three. We're looking at the rig strongholds here. So, yeah, like you said, Boo Boo Doo not having the strongest performance in that game number two. So really looking for him to step this one up. But that's still a lot of pressure for the rest of his team because Shotzi needs to maintain that same kind of performance here. And we want to see a lot more from Renegade as well as he was sitting at 10 and 12 that game. Normally he's going to be one of the guys who really steps up and carries these ones and, and pushes them forward. As far as power weapon kills go, it was seven for Optic and five for Splice, AKA Shotzi. He had all five of them with those sniper rifle kills. So, or, or Hydra isn't in, involved in that too. Uh, I'm not sure, but that's still much better than they did in game number one, which keep in mind they only had one power weapon kill. And who was the man with the power weapon kill in that game? It was Shotzi as well. So, you got to, you know, get your hands on these weapons if you're Renegade. That is his specialty. He's great with the railgun, he's great with the sniper rifle. Shotzi, too, obviously, he was doing some phenomenal things with the sniper rifle, but. When I look at that and I see it, it reminds me of what we saw from Ronin yesterday, where it was L-Town getting the weapons over and over again. Mm -hmm. It can't just be one person getting their hands on the weapons. It was Snakebite this time around with four power weapon kills, when he didn't even get many power weapon kills in the previous game. So Optic all takes their turns, and they're all really great at doing pretty much everything, right? You, you say, okay... I don't want to have Lethal with the Railgun. Well, I don't want to have Frosty with it either. I don't want to have Snakebite with it. These guys know what to do in almost all of the scenarios, and they play Halo at a very, very high level. That's why you have to capitalize on any mistakes that you see, or you just have to come out and play even better than them. I think right now we're not seeing the A game from both of these teams. I think they're kind of bringing their B-plus game. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're so evenly matched, it's very hard to bring that A game because people are countering you. They understand your play styles. They match up very well against you and they are very hungry to win. So you gotta take any type of advantage that you can. A lot of that, in my opinion, is gonna come down to getting the railgun here. And that's exactly what Frosty does. So I wanna watch out and see how many power weapon kills can Renegade find in here. Can he get a scatter shot? Can he get anything going? And that's not a good start. It's Frosty getting a double kill, potentially looking for the triple if he wants. It has a player on his radar. Just gonna leave that one. Doesn't even need to poke out. Look at the teamwork from Optic Gaming. They are so crisp and clean on their beginning strategies here. They've been playing from the red side for quite some time. And now they're gonna be able to put points on the board after capturing basement. The rotation going to come into nest right now for splice but i don't think that they're going to be able to capture that one by themselves great job from boo -Boo, boo picking up a kill on a snake bite that's going to slow the aggression down just a little bit but royal two he has the scatter shot you still have an empty 
Frost, uh, empty railgun for Frosty in his back pocket. And look at this, Kyle. Just complete domination the entire minute of this game, eventually going to result in a triple cap for Opti. Yeah, what's the slays like, Tom? Take a look at that here uh, when you got a second as well. So, what, six, seven, eight to eight two. two. Right Boobadoo Boo has two right now, and nobody else on Splice has a kill. There's Shooter picking up a kill on a snake bite. Potentially, Shotzi can find his first one as well. Not going to be able to, so. Very rough start here for Splice. You can tell Optic Gaming really stoked after that game two win. They have the communication going on. You gotta stop the bleeding here. That's a good start. Renegade able to capture the BR. You do have a player over there capturing basement as well. And that's just frustrating right there if you're Renegade. You took way too long to get that kill and you got weak a little bit there. So now you have to get into this nest ASAP, try to cap it, maybe even double cap it with a teammate. Otherwise, grenades are gonna be flying in over towards the nest any second. Wow, off to gaming. They're too distracted over towards that barrel side. And Renegade is gonna be able to capture that one himself with a nice pre-grenade. Yeah, we saw a split spawn here coming out of Optic Gaming. I think Snakebite was the first one up to spawn over towards Carbine, and then two members of Optic Gaming come off, came off spawn over towards Bunker. So kind of a, you know, a, li a little blessing in disguise, if I have to say so myself, they wanted to have that wow. collapse on Carbine, but wow, look at this scatter shot from Lethal. Just so powerful. That's a railgun in the hands of Boo Boo Doo Boo, and he barely manages to escape, but not long enough here. It gets cleaned up by Frosty. Nice little shot off the ground right there from Lethal. Didn't do as much damage as he probably hoped for. Still back that player off, so now he's just going to try to rotate on over towards where the railgun spawns and just hold this area with the scatter shot, which is a very, very powerful area to hold. So this is perfect here for off the gaming, but ooh, Renegade, he finally finds his first power weapon kill of the game. Shut down immediately though from Royal 2. So now Snakebite with that camo, possibly gonna try to look for those weapons. Is he gonna be able to stay alive? Goes down towards the trench, now making his way down over towards the basement window. He does live and get out of there with the camouflage. Yes, his camouflage is gonna tick away any second, but can he find these weapons? That would be huge. That's a big reset gonna happen over in the nest here. It was so close to being captured here for Splice, but 56 to four and a reset coming in. Numbers advantage oh, as you see, out. two dead. And yeah, there's a player left there. So we'll see how this one is gonna go. Do we know who that was? So Renegade Shooter Boo Boo Doo Boo. That's Shotzi, Shotzi. kinda lagged out. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a tough spot to be in because that was a slaughter. Yeah, yeah, that's a definitely a tough one to be in. So you're down 2-0 in this series. You're going up against Optic Gaming and Rick Strongholds. It's 58 to 4. You just, I mean, and that wasn't like it was Splice's time to come back right there either. They were still being killed. Uh, Frosty 10 and 4 so far that game, and then Shotzi sitting at 2 and 7. So complete opposite of what we were seeing from him in that Eden Strongholds game. There's nothing that you or can Eden do. Slayer. There's nothing that you can do if you're not able to take advantages and you're playing on the back foot against Optic the entire time. Because once they get momentum, once they start hitting their shots, start feeling themselves, getting in the zone, it gets scary. And you can really see Stronghold's game type snowball out of control because they can, you know, happen so quickly. I mean, what we were is 58 to four, and we were three minutes and 30 seconds into that game, Kyle. I mean, if they get a triple cap, we're looking at them ending the game in about a minute from then. So it, it could have got very ugly, very fast there for Splice. Curious to see what's going to happen on the replay. Um, probably going to give Optic around like 56 points or so, somewhere around that. Um, and then they have to get 44 while the other team has to get 96 is what I'm expecting. Uh, it could be a good thing, though, for Splice because, obviously, they couldn't get anything. They couldn't get any rotations. They couldn't get any weapons. Renegade finally got his first power weapon kill and immediately got taken out by Royal 2. Lethal was just scattershotting people in the face while he was no shields. The communication seemed to be there for Splice. They were definitely uh, trying their hardest. There, there wasn't like they were just laying down. It's just Optic was constantly pushing, and that's what happens sometimes when you lose a very close first game you lose a very close second game, all of a sudden the next team is so pumped up, especially because you just beat them in the finals that they just want to put the pedal to the metal and take you down. And I think that's what we were seeing in that game number three. Yeah, I mean, this is Optic Gaming not letting up right now. And sure enough, with a lead like this, it's hard to imagine any chance of coming back. We've only seen it really before. I want to say envy over evil geniuses when we saw just a monstrous comeback there. So is that the Eden game? Yeah, the Eden Stronghold game. Was, that was ridiculous. Uh, an infamous game there. Uh, but if any team could do it, you, you can't choose anyone else besides Splice. Well, besides maybe Envy now. Yeah, and it, it's not like it can't happen. There's still, you know, plenty of time to be able to come back from. But 
you don't you don't do yourself any favors. You're playing from the blue side again, so you're gonna have to do something different. They got camo, they got railgun to start that one. You didn't see anybody really push catwalk. You didn't see anyone push over towards the snipe hole. You didn't see anyone really contesting the camo, and they also didn't capture basement or nest. So I'm really curious to see what the opening strategy there was for splice, what their goals were, and where they were planning on you know taking their advantages on that map right from the beginning because I didn't see much. I really like again it's it, it seems like a no-brainer just taking the basement to start really trying to take that nest to start and just go from there try to shoot that camo down try to pick off the camo guy make sure they burn that and now you get the scatter shot they ended up getting the rail gun and let's see if you can you know play the radar or kind of just play the map because you know that you have nest you know that you have basement so then that's when you have to go and just kind of bait those out and hope that they make a mistake yeah, I mean, the beginning of that game was dis disastrous for uh, Splice there. They had Frosty getting the railgun uncontested, picked up three kills almost instantly. Uh, you know, Renegade was the only guy that was alive at the time over towards Engine 2 and was unable to escape, ultimately gets taken out as well. Gave Royal 2 the scattershot, and all of a sudden, you had five or six power weapon kills to zero, eight kill lead, or eight kills to two kills off the first minute of that game. And, of course, Splice, they weren't even able to capture the basement off the opening, like you said. Yeah, I'm not sure if this stat's correct, but I'm looking at the previous uh, post carnage report, and I see Snakebite sitting at 184 damage dealt. So I'm guessing that maybe he did some damage and he didn't die eventually uh, for quite some time, but he still had four deaths. He was running around just capturing strongholds the entire time. Most strongholds on his team captured, most strongholds secured, not any defended. But uh, but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty to start, and it started with Frosty just methodically picking these apart with picking these guys apart with the railgun. You saw him sitting top tower. You saw him waiting for his opportunities, listening to callouts, even leaving teammates. I mean, that's when you know your communication is so good when you see a guy and you picked up a double kill. You could have easily gone and challenged for the triple kill. Could have wasted more railgun ammo. Instead, he just leaves that for his teammate. Had the overkill sitting over towards BR base. But it takes some real communication and just real selfless play to leave a kill for your teammate. It's very, you know, rare to see that, honestly. Yeah, yeah. It has to be one of those teams where they're comfortable with each other and they're not worried about their individual performances. They're all just playing for the W. It's when things start getting thrown in the works there where people are, are scared of their individual stats that you really start seeing uh, more selfish plays or things that are kind of counterproductive to uh, coming out and taking the W in a game. Yeah, and I think that's why we saw Boo having um, the best performance on his team in this game because he had the worst performance on his team in the previous game. And he's, you know, in the position now where he's probably saying, all right, guys, that one was my fault. I'm going to come out here and try to step it up in this next game. And we heard in his interview that he's not necessarily worried about the stats. He's got the trust in his teammates the teammates got trust in him so that makes things so much easier for these guys to try to bounce back in the series I'm just worried for them now because it's not like we're going into game three and the score is zero zero I don't think we're going to have a full replay on that one like but like before when it was tied when the game ended this was very heavily in optic gaming's favor they had control of the map they had weapons they had positioning um, they had the lead and a pretty substantial lead at that so it's got to be scary here unless you can get something right off the get-go it's going to end very quickly right and while we try to get the players set up in the lobby, we're still trying to track down Shotzi and figure out his situation and what we can do there. But while we wait, we're going to take a quick break and we'll come back and let you know exactly how this game is going to play out, how we're going to treat this going forward here. So thanks for watching. We'll be back right after this.